Welcome one and all to another edition of the DFO Show with Luby here on the 5 Reasons Sports Network. Brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. Our homes, our offices, our inner sanctum. We feel safe. We feel secure. It's where we spend most, if most of all, most of our time. Maybe not all of it, but most of our time. We like to know that it's in good shape. And when there are issues, we freak out. At least I have in the past. Until I came across Water Cleanup of Florida. Because when it comes to water or fire issues... They get the job done. Not only do they actually answer the call and get up and get back to you. And when you just call 954-579-0356, but they fix the problem. And because they have licensed certified insured contractors, they make it look brand new. Water cleanup of Florida. We're there for my wife and myself. They'll be there for you. 954-579-0356. WCUFL.com. Check out the website. They're on the socials at water cleanup FL. Again, dealing with service companies, like I say it, quite often can be a pain in the rear. It's not. The word pleasure is something I never thought I would say dealing with a service company. It is applicable when it comes to water cleanup of Florida. 954-579-0356. If you have the schmutz, they have the guts. Water cleanup of Florida. The Miami Heat have had lots of guts over the years. I don't know if it's schmutz. I, I don't know lack of guts. I don't know what's going on with the Heat this season. The last few years, injuries have been a major issue. This year, as much as any, we talked to Mr. Five Reasons Sports, Mr. Heat, our Mr. Heat, Ethan Skolnick, about the Miami Heat. What's going on with them? The last time we talked to him, it felt like they could be world beaters. They were sitting there in the sixth spot within like a half half a game to a game behind the four seed, within two, three games of the three seed. Now they're within three games of the six, they're within half a game of the six seed, within three games of the five four seed, sitting there in the play in game, play in tournament right now. Injuries are a problem. What is going on with the Miami? We talk with Ethan Skolnick right now, the Diva Show with the Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Ethan Scoops Skolnick, welcome back to the show. I'm Mike Luby Lubitz, Jeff DeForest with you, and uh, from Five Reasons Sports Network, uh, outstanding journalist. Uh, Awarded uh, many of the top prizes uh, in, in journalism in terms of uh, rating uh, the performance of various people that were in the business. Ethan Scoop Skolnick joins us here on the show. Scoop, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm better than the heat right now, my friend. I, although I feel like I should be nursing some kind of an injury. Right? <laughs> like, what, what's bothering me? My thumb, uh, my entire arm, my leg, my whole body. Uh, it's kind of where I feel like the heat are right now. I mean, which was stranger? I mean, the Heat's regular season last year resulting in an appearance in the finals or the Heat's regular season this year so far where they they look sort of similar to what they did last year. Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's it's been a long series of kind of ups and downs, no? Yeah, I mean, I, I think this roster on the whole is better than last year's, um, but we've never got to see it whole. So, and and when we have seen it whole, it hasn't had enough time to get any rhythm, and so that's kind of where they're at right now. I mean, they're they're fighting to get out of the play-in, although I don't know how hard they're fighting when you know so much of their salary is sidelined on a nightly basis. I, I feel kind of bad for the guys who are pushed into roles that they shouldn't be in. You know, this is uh, this is a team that you know feeds off Jimmy Butler. And Jimmy Butler is not going to get to 60 games this year. Is he hurt? And what's with him? Yeah, what's he up hurt? with Butler? Because he played, I, and then I, now he's not I, playing. I, I mean, this time it's the foot. Uh, you know, Tyler is the foot. You know, it's it's one of those things. It's like it's like a game of operation at this point. We don't really know. I, and, look, I, I don't like to, to get in and say how hurt a guy is and whether or not he could play. I mean, that's up to each particular player. All I know is that. This didn't happen 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, you go back through the big three era, those guys played like, uh, you know, even Dwayne, like we complained about Dwayne, Dwayne played a higher percentage of games uh, during the big three era than Jimmy or Tyler is playing right now. So, you know, and then you look at the rest of the roster, you had guys like, you know, Shane Battier in his, you know, late sixties uh, playing, <laughs> kind of playing 77 games, uh, you know, it, they all played. Um, and, and so, you know, Norris Cole played 80 to 82 games. Rio uh, always played like, the, you know, 70s and 80s. And, I, you know, I sound like the old man here saying back in my day, but yeah, 
I, I, you know, it's the same organization. It's the same yep, people yep. in charge. It's, it's, and it, and we had Patty Mills on our podcast last night that actually just posted to the YouTube channel. How, how the hell did I he am, get here, uh, Scoop? I missed that one. I, I saw well, him out there. I'm like, Patty Mills, when did we get him? Well, by um, what method? well he was, he was stashed, uh, you know, on Atlanta in a rebuilding situation. And so he asked for a buyout. And, and when Josh Richardson got hurt and then Tyler got hurt, you know, they needed guard reinforcements. I don't think they necessarily thought that Patty was going to be playing clutch minutes, uh, you know, at, at his age. You know, I asked him yesterday, I said, you know, when you played for Pop, but even Pop, like we talked about the, you know, the, uh, the you know, the management, the, uh, you know, the load management, like the Pop was doing, which kind of started this yep. uh, about 15 years ago. Even he, even his guys were not sitting as much as this. I mean, I, and the Heat at that time had this very, had this strong stance against it. And now it seems to have flipped the other direction. You know, he said that some of it is just players, you know, wanting to be a hundred percent when they play and, and all the rest of this and the training staffs wanting to make sure they're ready for something later. And I, I I've heard that argument and, you know, just be ready for the playoffs, but you're making yourself harder it harder for yourself when you get into the playoffs. Um, yeah. I, I mean, you're, uh, I mean, you're looking at like, you know, in eight seed, that means that you got to win a potentially if that's where they're at, they, you got to win a road game uh, in the, in the play in just to get yourself positioned to go into the playoffs to play a road series. I mean, this, you know, what the heat did last year has sort of skewed everybody's sensibilities on this because that just doesn't happen. Like uh, you, you don't go from being the eight seed or seven seed losing a game, ending up in the eight seed. And then, you know, <laughs> in the last three minutes of the game, you're fighting to, to, you know, just, just to survive. You need 31 from Struess and a big shot at the end just to get out of there. And then, you know, you have to play, you know, you're playing Milwaukee and Boston and all those teams early in the playoffs. I, I it's, this is going to be a Herculean task for them. If they don't just get to the six, they got to get to the six. And at the, and, and then at least, you know, okay. Reset probably playing Cleveland, maybe New York, uh, maybe Orlando, uh, and, and just, you know, look, try to steal a road game there. But if they're trying to get out of the play in again, I, I think they're, I think they're out before they even get to the playoffs, to be honest. All right. I mean, what needs to happen? Guys just have to get out there. Uh, I, I naturally was a little bit shocked cause, uh, I, I blindly uh, took the four points with the heat against Philadelphia thinking Philadelphia isn't very good and uh, the heat are going to start to make their push. And then I turn on the television set and there's Jimmy Butler in street clothes. And all I could do, Scoop, was look at the television set and scream, fuck! <laughs> right. Well, that's why you probably should have got... the cable company got, thinking the signal went out. You know, she, she couldn't figure out what I was screaming about. You probably should have gotten six and a half at that point. I, look, it, it's... Uh, Which would have been real of, torture, by the way. Well, exactly. I yeah. Look, it's just that, you know, again, it's three, four hours before the game. And, you know, when the message that he's been downgraded from questionable to out, I, I don't know how that's not deflating uh, for this team at this point. I... They feed off of him in so many different ways. They're built around him. That the, the, the whole structure of the organization is built around him now. They've let him get away with things they never let LeBron get away with uh, all across the board, basically because he has produced and Pat sees him as kind of an extension of himself. And to a certain degree, Spo does also, but it's everything. And, you know, but the one thing that has to happen is play and um, I, I can't even count, like I said, I can't even count the number of injuries at this point that he's had. And we knew that this would be somewhat of an issue when they signed him because Tibbs had put a lot of wear on him and all the rest of that. And, and again, he's getting excused because of what he's produced in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, you watch that game and you're like, OK, you've got Caleb and Hawkes and Mill. They're trying to do things that they are not tasked with doing on well, this Rogier, team. Look, Rogier's if actually playing, playing well. <laughs> like, Rogier's supposed to be their fourth or fifth dude. Rogier wasn't brought in to be their right. second guy. <laughs> like, right. they, like, the whole thing, like, look, at some point, and again, I'm, not, I'm I learned last year, I'm not throwing anything out. Who knows what the mm. hell will happen? There's still, like, 14 games left. Fine. It's just, it felt like there was reasons last year. It felt like like Devo's comparing the season last year. Last year, I felt like they were hurt and they were frustrated right. and, and they were like, what the hell's going on? This year, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like whenever they play, they get on a roll. It's like, oh, look at them. We had you on two weeks ago. Look at the heat. There's no one they're scared of. And I believed it. Now I'm like, I wouldn't want to play anyone. Like the way Magic are playing, the way the right. Knicks are playing, like they care. At least they care. Like you have Suggs right. finally mattering. You have Cole Anthony mattering. The Knicks, 
they want to make Brunson an MVP, you know, like whatever it is, at least they play, at least they care. Like the heat, it's like Caleb Martin has been up and down all year. Hawkes is now he's a rookie. Like how much we, we were making Hawkes uh, their third best player at one, you know, like you're, you're trying to thrust these guys into weird ass roles. Well, teams have scouted him at this point. And so it, that's the thing. He's got to now counter that. And, and that's not easy. I mean, for a guy who's already played twice his college season, um, you know, Caleb, I think, has actually been pretty good over the last couple of months. Um, once he he kind of got into a rhythm, I mean, now even as much time as he missed early in the season, he's going to end up playing a lot more games than either Tyler or Jimmy. I mean, Tyler's stuck on 36. I mean, I don't know that he's getting to 40 um, wow. at this point. And, and Jimmy Jimmy's not getting to 60. And I, it, there does seem to have been an, an organizational shift here where they're they're tolerating this. And uh, like I said, it's just frustrating to watch. Uh, you know, I, I thought that Pat used to be too much the other way where he would be driving them for the one seed. And, you know, and then during the big three era, I thought they kind of found a happy medium. They, they would play hard enough to get a home seed and, and not stress themselves too much. Like they didn't catch Chicago that first year. They didn't catch Indiana one of the other years. They just went up and beat them in the playoffs. Okay, so that's one series that you got to do that. But, you know, when you got to do it, not just three series, if you're going to get to the finals, but you also have to get out of a play in just for the right to have an opportunity to do that. Uh, you're just creating a situation where, again, first, it puts too much stress on your players later on. Uh, and it's not it's not plausible to continue to do this. And, and additionally, I do think it gives the fans the idea that you just don't care about the regular season. And, and so then they're going to start to tune out. And, and we've. Honestly, because we gauge our numbers on a daily basis, we've noticed that when they have a big win, which has been far and few between, we get a ton of downloads. Um, but otherwise, it, there just seems to be sort of an apathy about this team right now, again, because it's kind of like, OK, let's see where they end up and see if Jimmy can save us again. And I don't know. Jimmy doesn't look inclined to save anybody right now. Like, I, I just <laughs> I, I don't you know, his numbers are good. Uh, the efficiency numbers are good. But. If you actually break down the games, there's been about like six or seven games this year that he's been really engaged. Uh, other than that, there's been a lot of kind of no shows for a quarter, for a half. I mean, against the better teams in the league like Boston, Milwaukee, you know, every time they have a national TV game, everybody says, oh, Jimmy will get up for this one. Actually, he's played the worst in those games. If, <laughs> if you look at his numbers against the better teams in the league, there's a lot of 13 points, 15 points, 16 points on low efficiency. Uh, his better games this year have come against the garbage teams. Um, and that's just kind of, again, I, I'm a big Jimmy fan. I love what he's done here in Miami. I'm not necessarily saying you trade him in the offseason. I'm not going that far. But I do think there needs to be a recalibration of, okay, are, are we going to play hard in the regular season or are we going to take this seriously? Because if he doesn't, they don't. And I, and I just think that's where they're at right now. Holy Louis Pasteur, we need him to look into this. Well, what happened? <laughs> this guy was supposed to be the epitome of heat culture. And, and, and he seemed to be all of that. Like he, he had this uh, sort of inner anger, it, it appeared, that uh, would not allow him to uh, capitulate mm -hmm. to what's going on in the NBA today, which is, uh, hey, we, we don't know if these guys are showing up tonight. And uh, that, that seems uh, to be an open defiance of everything that we thought the Heat were acquiring and, and looked like it was in evidence early on in, in, in Jimmy Butler. It, it just it doesn't seem uh, that, that it's uh, – comprehensible that, that he would be the guy that you're looking at and going is he with us or not uh, and, oh, and I guess maybe he'll turn it up in the playoffs but uh, you know I I don't know that fans really want to embrace that uh, and, and they're one superstar or budding superstar that everybody was trying to put in that category that, that he was a guy that could carry a team on his back he has uh, look he has uh, he did against against LeBron in, in you know the Lakers finals and, and obviously Dragic and bam, don't get hurt. He might have a ring already. Yeah. I, I don't want to go so far as to say that the fact that he's in 10 different endorsements. I mean, he literally has 10 companies. Yeah, yeah. How did he get now. all these commercials? When did his Q rating, I, I, uh, you know, approach down to Kelsey? His, his agent did a hell of a job for him. Wow. He's going to be in Bad Boys 4 also. And more power to him. I, that stuff, I, look, guys do all kinds of stuff off the court. Uh, you know, being in a controlled setting, shooting a commercial for, for three hours on an off day. I don't, I don't care about that. Like, that's yeah. good for him. But but I so I'm not going to go that far. But I I do think okay that he may have that whole emo Jimmy thing at the beginning of the year. 
you know, sometimes you're telling on yourself a little bit, like all jokes have a hint of truth. And I, I just, I think that he, he believed that they were getting Dame or someone of that caliber to help him carry the load during the regular season. And they didn't. And instead, you know, they have Tyler who doesn't play. And, and so it, it's just kind of like, I, I think that this thing has kind of melted down a little bit because there were expectations, even if the reality was that they were, it wasn't really their fault. They were dealing with an organization that did not want to communicate with them. I, I think they, I think that their top guys believed that they were getting reinforcements and they didn't. And I think with Bam, we see it in the way of not necessarily him drooping his shoulders or anything like that, but more so he's asked to carry so much yep. of the burden for them defensively. And I think at this point of the year, he just wears down. Yep. I, I just think he, yep. I think he wears down. We've seen it every year and there's not an, and then there's like, okay, why isn't Pam taking over? He's exhausted. Uh, he can at this day. It's not, he's not that kind of player to begin with to do it every night. And then you don't have Jimmy, you don't have Tyler. He's asked to carry the whole thing defensively. He's the only one out there most of the time. And it's like, okay, bam, do everything. And then fans get pissed when he doesn't. And I'm just I'm like, okay, they need to take a serious look at this this offseason, like yes. they have in previous builds, and say, all right, we may need to give up more than we want to. We may need to give up more of the future than we want to. But we ha- if we're gonna if we're gonna make it work with Jimmy and Bam, we have to get them more help to at least carry through the season. Jimmy's going to play 55 games. Okay. So get someone in the other 27 who's going to carry us. And, and that they just don't have that right now. All right. So, and uh, Luby's counting on his theory that Boston will collapse and, and isn't what know. they appear to be. I don't know. And uh, that the heat somehow will get it together. I think he's going back to his old magic wand theory, uh, Ethan, <laughs> and uh, that they're going to be able to wave a magic wand over the whole thing and, and get it together on the playoffs. Uh, Spolster's got to be ready to pull his hair out, huh? Is it standing up like Don King at these post game oh, press is. conferences? I don't, I don't, I don't know if he's coloring it. He's doing a hell of a job. He's three years older than me, and uh, I, I, I saw a little gray there on the top, and now it's disappeared. But if I were him, I'd have a lot of them. So right. yeah, that's, he's doing his best. All right, we'll uh, we'll keep in touch. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know how excited you are at five reasons about the uh, college basketball tournament. College basketball, not necessarily the marquee point here in uh, South Florida, even though we had two teams in the uh, final four last year and still a possibility that, that one might make it back there, although uh, a mm-hmm. slim possibility. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, we'll, we'll look forward to all of this coverage on five reason sports network and uh, see if we can't find a solution for the heat scoop. Thanks. Always a pleasure. My friend. Great job as thanks, always sir. scoop does know his stuff. Uh, Luby. Yes. Yes, he does. <laughs> there, um, look, plenty of people have covered the heat for a long time, covered the NBA, uh, but for us, Ethan Scoops Golden that covers him as well as anyone, he leans their way in the sense that he's worked with them closely for years. So he knows how they think, he knows how they act, and he understands them, and they find a way to win. So it makes sense that he would give them benefit of the doubt. However, he's very honest when it comes to the Miami Heat, and it's hard, it's hard to see what's going on this year and not see it be an issue. Jimmy Butler, Mr. Competitive, is going to play less than 60 games. So he's going to play about half the games this season. That is utterly ridiculous when he's had injuries, but he hasn't had major injuries. Tyler Hero will play less than half the games this season, which for a guy that's in his early 20s is ridiculous. And it's every year for Tyler Hero. And these are supposed to be their number one and number three players on a roster that's supposed to contend for a title. I mean, they played in the finals last year without Hero, their number three player. I agree with Ethan. They have a better roster this year. They have more talent this year. They have even more size. When you look at Jovic, when you look at Bryant, and they have more scoring now with Rozier compared to what Lowry was with Hawkins Jr., who can score from all three levels. Who, When you throw in uh, some of the... just. Caleb Martin, who's now back playing, and a guy that we saw shine on the in the conference finals, is it should be a different player. In the last month or so, as Ethan said, he has been a different player. But the Heat have struggled, and all year long, whenever they start to build steam, and they did it, they were they had won a bunch of games, seven of eight or something like that. They had won what was it like eleven out of fourteen. They had gotten themselves into the sixth seed, fifth seed, and were a half game out of the fourth seed. And now they've lost like four of six or something. They, they even they took games they won versus the Pistons. They did not look good in those games versus the are not arguably the worst team in the NBA. They lost to a Wizards team that was second worst in the NBA. They just are playing not great basketball right now. And again, it's not the team, it's not the roster. It's those two guys. Bam Adebayo gives everything he can. I get frustrated because after the Oscar break, he dips. Well, Ethan talked about it. He dips because he's exhausted. He has to be there, everything on defense, and he does contribute on offense. 
And at some point, that weighs on you. And that's not supposed to be his job. His job is supposed to be good to great on defense with help from Jimmy Butler, with help from everyone else, and good to great on offense with the facilitators of Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, and a Rozier. The problem is, with no Butler or Hero, everything falls on Bam, and it gets exhausting, and it's daunting. And you see that. And the Heat have the talent, but I don't know what's going on with Butler, and I don't know what the deal is with Hero. And to me, they were a team I thought could beat anyone two weeks ago. Now I'd be scared to play anyone right now. I won't write them off. There's like 14 games left. There's plenty of time to, for them to figure out a way to get into that sixth spot. I think they're only a half, half a, they're around a half a game to a game, depending on the night and when you listen to this, behind the Pacers in that sixth spot or the Sixers in that sixth spot. They're within striking distance. And honestly, they have as much of them more talent than I would put everyone from, everyone from four on, the Miami Heat. And the Cavs aren't superior in talent to the Heat. It's... Health and all these other teams, even when they've had injuries, find a way to get back to health, healthy. The Heat don't get there. So we'll see what happens. I wouldn't put it past them to make a run in the playoffs. I wouldn't put it past them to get to that sixth seed, to get to the fifth seed. But they got to start making a move and they got to play. And at some point, and Ethan talked about it, they got to retool. Look, they went big game hunting the last two, three years to give Butler help. They haven't been able to do it. They got a pony up. Don't wait for the other. And it wasn't their fault this time around with Dame. The Blazers, I think no matter what they offered the Blazers, the Blazers, look, if you see what they took, none of the players they took back either play for them or do anything good. Aiton is useless. So they gave away Damian Lillard, and then they gave away Drew Holiday to all-star caliber slash superstar caliber players, at least in Damian Lillard's case, and got nothing. So it didn't matter what he'd offered. So that's not their fault, but they got to come big. There are players out there that would fit perfectly with Jimmy Butler and give him relief. He's showing you, and the playoffs will give his all until he gets hurt, and even then, he gives his all. The regular season, he sort of screws around. I mean, that's, uh, there's no other way to say it. He needs help so that his screwing around doesn't kill the team because that's what you see. They're sitting around the eighth seed right now, and they should be a three or four seed at worst. They should be right there with the Celtics or the Bucks. They should. And right now, they're fighting with the Pacers and, and the Magic, and they play in teams. So we'll see how this season wraps up. Check us out each and every morning from 8 to 9 on South Florida Live, the YouTube and Facebook channels. You can check us out with our daily podcast, nofilter.net, or just Google The Morning Briefing, Caffeine TV. Check us out on our national podcast. We have stuff there daily. We also do interesting sports and out-of-sports conversations on the Believe Network, B-L-E-A-V.com. Search after hours. And our South Florida content right here, The Devo Show with the Luby, on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Hey folks, Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously. Friendly atmosphere, not too loud, but good energy, reasonable prices, and a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, <laughs> no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food. Amazing atmosphere. Good for a family. Good for a date or just a night out for yourself. And prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched. Steaks hand cut every day. Everything, and I mean everything, is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low-carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? From the newly renovated sports bar to the beautiful bayside views captured at the Tiki Bar, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill has it all. Located at mile marker 104, the Big Chill also offers waterfront dining while experiencing breathtaking sunset views of the Florida Keys. It's simply the hottest spot in the Keys to cool off. That's Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill at mile marker 104 in Key Largo. For more information, call today at 305-453-9066. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup, all you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers Raw Bar and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home.